Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with the last lesson in our Scratch Essentials tutorial series. And I thought for our last lesson we'd have a little bit of fun inside of Scratch. Not that we haven't been having fun up till this point, but I thought we'd tackle something a little bit different and a very, very cool, and that is 360 degree VR footage. Now in this lesson I'm going to show you how we can get the footage into Scratch, flag it as being 360 degrees, and get in and do a little bit of color correction and a little bit of rig removal to take the shot from normal to being extraordinary and something that you'll be able to work no problem into the production that you are working on. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Assimilate Scratch. And as you can see in front of us, we have the Scratch VR splash screen. And things are gonna work a little bit different from our previous lessons. And I do wanna point out that with the regular version of Scratch, you can view 360 media and grade it the same way that you would any other media using the standard version of Scratch. What's also important to keep in mind is that the non-VR version of Scratch does support VR headsets like Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. Now, with the Scratch VR version, what this gives you access to is VR tools like Repeat 360 that I'm gonna show in this lesson, and other VR plugins that you'll see as well. And keep in mind that you do need the special Scratch VR license for that. So let's move on now and let's create a new project for our final lesson. We're gonna call this Introduction to VR. And we're going to create that project. We're gonna leave everything the way that it is, except for the fact that before we were working with 2398 footage, in our case, our footage is 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second. So we're going to want to make sure that our project's frame rate matches that of our footage. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna say okay, and we are going to enter the project. Now, of course, we do need some footage to work with here. I'm going to navigate to the desktop. We have our footage in our SWAT folder. What I'm going to do is simply select all of those clips and we're going to open them. We're gonna drop them into the slots. There we go, very nice. And you might think that we're already ready to jump into the edit module, jump down to one of the shots here and start controlling it in 360 degrees. However, you'll notice that as I'm clicking, nothing is happening. Now, couple things going on here. You might think, oh, well, well, I've got this little sphere down here that when I hover over it says toggle 360 degrees spherical view on off, then I'm gonna turn that on. Nope, still nothing's happening. So what exactly is going on here? What's going on here is that we're almost there when it comes to viewing this footage in 360 degrees. However, we haven't actually told Scratch that this footage is 360 degree footage. That's why we can't control it like it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to the construct window and we're going to head over to, again, you've heard me say this throughout the entire course, my favorite tool, the media browser. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the footage. You'll notice that its projection type is set to normal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, I'm gonna change its projection type from normal to equirectangular 360 degrees. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that not only have I now made our footage 360 degree footage, but if it was stereoscopic 360 footage, I could actually get in and assign that right here as well. Okay, but since we are only working in monoscopic footage, I'm just gonna say okay, and you'll notice that what has happened is a little icon has been put in here that looks like that globe inside the edit module. So let's go check out what's happening. I'm gonna come back to the edit module because again, you'll see if I start clicking, nothing's happening. However, if I turn that sphere on, you'll immediately see now that our footage can now be taken and rotated in 360 degrees. I can now hit play and see all the footage here the way that it was shot, okay? So let me just stop this right here because now that we've got all of our footage looking the way that we want it to look, I think what we're gonna do is let's just focus on one shot. And I think what's the shot that we're gonna focus on here is, let's just pick one here. Let's pick our, our guy here because he needs a little bit of, of color work done to him as well. He's a little bit washed out. And I wanna pick a shot that's gonna need a little bit more work done to it than all the other ones will. So I'm just gonna come back to the construct window. I'm going to select everything except the last shot and I'm going to delete them. I'm just gonna remove all those empty slots and I'm going to head back to the edit module. Now, let's be honest, it's gonna be a little bit hard to come in and let me just rotate our window here and do the removal of a, what I like to call the black hole here at the bottom and the black hole that we have up here at the top 
in 360 degree view. Now keep in mind that this hole right here might very well be the rig that the 360 degree camera is sitting on. So the concept is going to work the same whether you have the black hole or you have the hole or you have the actual rig in your shot. Okay, so let's come back here now. Now keep in mind that it doesn't matter whether I'm working with you know, regular footage or working with stereoscopic 360 footage, what I do have the ability to do at any time is to come in and say, okay, well, let's come to our numeric setup. Let's just give a little bit of a lift adjustment. We'll give a little bit of a gamma adjustment, a little bit of a gain adjustment. We'll just give this a little bit of saturation here. Whoops, that's not what we want. We wanted saturation. There we go. Just to give our guy a little bit more of a proper skin tone look. Now, of course, at any time as well, we can jump into any one of our parameters, get in and start making adjustments. Maybe we're going to make this sort of look like it's, you know, towards the end of the day. Maybe they're coming in, you know, sort of at dusk because they're going to, you know, do some big takedown. So we, of course, at any point can come in, add anything we want, canvases, adjust curves, get in and do qualifiers. We can do all of that work just like we would do in a normal session. Okay. Now, let's talk about what's going on down here and how we can fix this. Because, to be honest, we can't have it like this. Because when the user is rotating around, the last thing we want is them to see this giant hole in our screen. Actually, two giant holes in our image. So let's get in and fix this. Now, to get in and fix this, what we actually want to do is take our footage and flatten it. Now, saying that, what you might think that we want to do is to come in and turn our 360 degree view off. However, You'll notice the problem with that is that it doesn't actually help us because we can't actually see the hole when the image is wrapped in 360 degrees. What I would really like to do is to almost take that 360 degree sphere and cut it so that I can actually see where those holes are so that we can get in and cover them up. Well, let me show you how we can actually do that inside of Scratch. We're going to do it with an effect. I'm going to come down to plugins. Now, this is a standard effect that comes with Scratch VR. I'm going to come to the VR section and we're going to choose a VR transformer. Now what's important about this effect is that it's a node based effect. You don't want to apply it on a layer, just on a node. So I'm going to say apply on node. And once I apply it on the node, what we want to do is we want to come back to the convert option and I want to convert it from equirectangular to cubic. Now, as soon as I do that, you're going to see that it almost looks like we could now take this image and wrap it up in a perfect cube to then take it and rotate it in 360 degrees. What it's also done now is it's given us these two black holes in a perfect location for us to get in and to cover them up. So how do we go about covering them up? Well, we're going back to plugins because I'm just going to come back to the standard effects that come with Scratch and we're going to be doing a vector paint to our shot. So I'm going to apply this on the node again. And once it's applied on the node, what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in. I'm just going to reposition this. We're going to do the top one first here because it's probably the easier of the two to do. Okay. Now what you might think is that we're just going to come in and just start painting. Oh, okay, well that's not quite what I want. What I'd really rather do is sort of eye drop this color and then we're going to sort of color this in. We're actually not going to do any of that because I don't want to do this as a paint effect. I want to do it as a clone effect. Okay. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to change our paintbrush to a clone brush. Now, much like in Photoshop, I'm just going to bring the cursor over here just so that you can see it. You'll see that we now have two cursors happening and one slightly lags when I move the mouse around like this. Okay. What we want to do is I want to now select a certain area of the shot that we're going to clone over another area. Now you'll notice that as I just do this, nothing happens because technically what we're doing is we're cloning the exact same thing over the exact same thing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold command on the Mac, control on Windows, and we're going to click and drag. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to position the clone tool. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that the target or the crosshairs is what we're going to be cloning. The circle is where we're going to be cloning it to. Now, it's a little bit hard to see, but you'll see that I'm actually cloning right in about here on the screen because I want to just fill this with white. Now, I'm not filling it with white. I'm actually cloning the area that's perfect white so that what's going to happen is, is that when this plays back, you're not even going to see that that's there. Now, this was a bit of the easier one to do. Now, something else that I should do as well is that I'm going to come back here and let's just get this correct here just because it's not quite right. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, good. So what we now want to do is come down to the bottom of the screen. Now, this one's a little bit trickier than the other one was. Now, you'll notice where our rotation pretty much is happening for the most part. It's in here. Okay, now 
I'm kind of using a wide brush, kind of like shooting a fly with a cannon, but at any point we can come in and make adjustments to the brush right here. Now, what I should probably do, it's kind of a little bit hard to see, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move things like that so that when I do come down to the brush size, and if you keep an eye in here, you'll see it, that when we shrink it down, the brush is gonna get a lot smaller, okay? So what we can now do is we can now come in and just start doing that, but you'll notice again, hard brush, not what we want. We want to soften this brush up a little bit so it kind of looks like that. And now what we can do, and to be honest for me, I always find making the brush size bigger just to be a little bit better, okay? Is that we're now going to start cloning areas of this in, okay? And we want to combine it with different parts of the shot because to be honest, we want it to sort of look like it did before, kind of like that. Okay, but then we want to combine other aspects of it, kind of like this. Maybe I want to have a little bit of the truck tires in here. Okay, kind of like that. We'll run the truck tires all the way up. Okay, just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. Okay. Now, to be honest, I could be doing this forever. I think this is looking pretty good right about here. Okay, just sort of match everything up, very nice. And what I'm now gonna do is just zoom back. Okay, so let's zoom back, just like such, and you'll see, to be honest, that looks like where that tire has come in and stopped right in front of our SWAT guy. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to convert this back to being 360 degrees. Now, we're gonna come back to plugins, we're going to come back to our effects VR, I'm going to come to the VR transformer. We're going to again apply it to the node. I'm going to come down here. We're going to convert it from cubic back to equirectangular. And what we're now going to do is I'm just going to give this a quick process because what's important to keep in mind is that based on the size of the 360 footage that you're working on, meaning the raster size, you could be working in 2K, 4K, 8K, doesn't matter. You could be working in stereoscopic. That based on the footage type could be ProRes, you know, could be a different codec altogether. Plus, based on your system parameters, you might not necessarily get real time playback. But of course, once you've gone in and cached it, you'll now see that you get playback just like such. And what I can now do is I can come back to the edit module, put us back in 360 degree view. And now what we have is not only our footage set up for 360, but we also have it graded and we also have all of that junk removed, that giant black hole at the bottom of the screen, as well as at the top of the screen. And this clip is now all set to go for me to either, you know, use it for whatever I'm working on. Maybe I'm going to send it off so that a colorist can step in and do even more work on it. But I've basically done most of the rough work that needs to be done on this clip and it's all set to go. Now, if we were ready to take this and export it for a platform, let's say for YouTube or for Facebook in 360 degree, we could go in, we could render this file out and upload it, tag it for 360 degrees, and this clip will be all set to go to see in 360 degrees on whichever supported platform that we happen to be delivering it to. Now, there is one last thing that I want to show you that's very cool and very unique to Scratch. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out of 360 degree view just because what I want to do is I actually want to paint a little bit of a horizon on here. Maybe we're going to get in and we're going to deepen the colors up here in the sky. So I'm going to come to the color effects module. You'll remember from previous lessons we talked about getting in and using our canvas. I'm just going to add a new freeform shape. Let me just zoom back a little bit here. And I'm just going to draw it like such here. And I'm not going to worry too much about the rotors of the plane. But what I am going to do is I'm going to draw this shape and I'm going to add a bunch of extra points outside of our canvas. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to close this off. One of the problems that you run into when working in 360 degrees is if I was to get in and to make a pretty major balance adjustment here, I'm just going to make this sky a very definite pink color so that we can definitely see that it's pink, is that when we come back into 360 degree view, when I start to rotate around, you'll notice that we have this very hard edge. And what this hard edge represents is where our footage is actually being attached together. And the problem is that there's really no way around this other than attempting to do the grade on both sides of our screen and then mesh them together. Ah, but not if we're working in Scratch. Scratch, like I said, has this great feature inside of the canvas right over here called Repeat 360. Now I want you to watch what happens as soon as I select it. 
you'll see that what Scratch has done is it has actually taken the part of my canvas that's outside of the frame and it's added it over here on the left hand side. Now the question is how would I get in and adjust this part of our color shape so that it matches the horizon? Well if I come in and say edit and I start manipulating points on this side where we actually created the shape, you'll notice that they're immediately being adjusted over there on the left side as well. So what we could do is get this looking exactly the way that we want it to look. I could even take this over here like such, and then once we're ready to stick it back into 360 degree view, we can simply do that. And now you'll see that if I rotate through, that shape is perfect and moves smoothly across our 360 degree image just like we had have painted it like that from the beginning. All right, now as always, if you have any questions, you have any comments or ideas for upcoming lessons or courses, I want you to head on over and post them in our forums at lowpost.com slash forums. And if you have any questions for me, you can always send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com.